happening. Tonight. You're now under arrest because you've provided us with a positive blood alcohol test. The recruits hit the road in an RBT blitz. Well, I'm just the rest of you, mate. Just block me up and put me up. You know what I mean? Oh, yes! At college, vehicle stops put Frankie under pressure. Stick your hands up in the air. You don't know what floor you're on. How do you get back to your room? And a rookie's inner city car search has an unexpected result. It doesn't matter, man. I'm not explaining to you why I don't, can't remember the floor. After months at police college, one day can start to blur into the next. This is not one of those days. So I'm picking up my uniforms. Three months in the making. Finally here and hopefully, yeah, I'm pretty stoked how it's gonna be good here school. You get like two pairs of boots, you get five pairs of pants, you get dress pants, wet weather gear. Putting the uniform on for the first time for a recruit is exciting. Um, dawning. All eyes are actually looking upon you. And it's, if you're a self-conscious kind of person, I could imagine that taking some getting used to. It's <laughs> a whole bunch of fun right there. I'm gonna have to iron these a fair bit. I don't like the slacks. They're very high. I'm not, not sure about this. What's going on here? What's what happening? This? But what is, what this? is this? What is this? What is this? But what is this? Nowhere near it. Yeah, like we've still got another three months of um, hard work we've got to put in to earn this. And um, yeah, once we earn it, we'll get a proper badge and proper epaulets and mm. we'll get our gun and everything. We'll be out in the street and hopefully we'll make good cops. The students aren't allowed to wear their uniforms outside college, but from today, they'll look like cops even if they're still learning how to act like them. Today's lesson is how to stop a vehicle. Vehicle stops, police do them all the time. Low risk vehicle stops, they do the most. Um, uh, RBTs, people driving erratically on the road. If you were getting shot School at... School leaver Frankie is about to discover stopping vehicles can be dangerous and unpredictable. In this scenario, he's pulled over a car full of armed offenders and he'll be in command. It is a big responsibility. I mean, you're in charge and it's on your shoulder, so, yeah. You want one person giving clear, concise directions in relation to what you want the occupants of the vehicle to do in what order. Occupants of the blue Toyota, you've been pulled over because we consider you armed and dangerous. I want all the occupants of the car to put their hands on their heads. Driver of the blue Toyota, I want you to turn the vehicle off and put the keys on the roof of the car. It's, it's a scary situation that it, you know, definitely could be real and could happen to me one day. That's probably the, the, the worst bit. All right, I want you to slowly walk towards the sound of my voice. Slowly, with your hands raised up in the air. Any sort of movement you make will be deemed as a threat. You understand that? We have your, our firearms pointed at you. Keep your hands locked together. Passenger of the blue vehicle, I want you to exit the vehicle through the driver's side door. All right, exit the vehicle and face the other way. Put your hands up in the air and face the other way. Frankie's got two offenders out safely. What he doesn't know is there's a third still hiding in the car. Do you want to just stay there, Chris? Do you want to just stay there and watch the side? Just check the front seat and the back seat. Back seat's clear. Not too bad. We had someone in there. A bit of a surprise, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, not too bad at all. I think uh, we did everything systematically and um, just the one mistake at the end. I think we should have just been a little bit more cautious about the, the trunk of the car, so...
21-year-old Andrew Hubbard graduated from college five months ago. He grew up on Sydney's quiet northern beaches and still stands out in the city's busy centre. Are you looking? Huh? Looking. New cop on. Huh? Are you new cop on? I knew enough. There's certain things which I'm getting the hang of, but then I still obviously feel quite new. Still definitely the, the bottom rank. Tonight, Hubbo is on patrol with Constable Adam Haskara when a Hummer four-wheel drive catches their eye. That's pretty fancy number, mate. It's true. Police routinely run background checks on cars that attract their attention. Yeah. Running. Five warnings. What for? Ice user. Secret compartment, drugs located, amphetamines. Yeah. It's registered, I think. That's just up the end there. Hubbo is about to put his vehicle stop training into practice. City 1A for transport. Probationary Constable Andrew Hubbard and his partner have pulled over a suspicious vehicle. In the past, the car has been associated with drugs and firearms. How are you going? How are you today? Not too bad. You got anything to drink? Not at all. Lovely. All right. Just blow slowly and continuously for me. You don't need to blow too hard. We've just uh, stopped this vehicle just to do a check on it. I've uh, just got a bit of intel on it for, for drugs. So we might just uh, have a quick search of it. Just jump over here for us, mate. Cheers. The two occupants are asked to step out. But for a moment, the passenger moves to the front of the car and out of sight. It's only a few seconds, but it could be important. Where's your friend? Is it just some money, is it? It's around the front there. Yeah, right there. Um, OK, I'll just get both of you to sit over here, just in this gutter area. Yep, right there, it's fine. All right, we're going to search the car. Before I start searching, is there anything in there that I need to know about? OK, all right. Just sit tight and bear with us. Um, we should be done shortly. Backup soon arrives, but it's the behaviour of the passenger that's starting to catch their eye. We believe when he got out of the vehicle, he went around the front of the vehicle, which is a bit, a bit weird, but we believe he's actually taken an unknown amount of drugs. And at the moment, he's actually getting a lot worse. He's actually getting more and more affected by drugs. The man can't even answer basic questions. Do you know what your address is now, where you're staying in Sydney? Yeah, I'm staying in Sydney. Yeah. Or well, do you just, is it just McCure? Yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm going back to Perth soon. What's your room number? I don't know, it was my room. Do you know what floor you're on in the McCure? You don't know what floor you're on? How do you get back to your room? I don't, mate. The incident is important enough to attract the command's senior officers. Mate, call me a little bit cynical, but I don't think you you've been quite honest with me, like you're telling the truth. What am I not telling you the truth about? You're drug affected. That's clear. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you're lying to me about that. What's your name? Justin. Justin. What's his name? Shane. How do you know Shane? Just met him tonight, sir. Just, you met him tonight? Mm -hmm. So this guy that you just met, you throw in your very expensive Hummer. Why would you do that? Mate, seemed like a pretty good bloke. I'll offer anyone of it. So the car's been searched, it's clean? Yeah, yeah, I've yeah, gone through it. It's nothing. You got his details? Yeah. yeah. The car is clean and the driver free to go. But police Sorry? are increasingly worried about the passenger's well-being. No, we want to take you somewhere who can to someone who can look after you. Yeah, but you're not going to take me anywhere that's not someone's going to look after me without a, without a badge and that. You know what I mean? What do you mean? Well, you're not going to take me and just say, "Oh, can you look after this bloke?" He's gotten a hell of a lot worse in half an hour. Yeah. We need to get him to the hospital. Let's yeah. check him out. Well, I can stay here if you want. I'll... No, no, we'll take you up the hospital, mate. I'm a bit concerned fine. about you. We're fine. Hey, I'm all right. Well, I'm sweet, I have to stay here. Should I take him up to the hospital now and get him checked out and make sure he's not going to overdose on in front of us or anything like that? Come on, let's go to the hospital. This way. Let's go. The man isn't facing any charges, but will be admitted to hospital for observation. Beanies. 
good. A bit more ramming out. City one. City one. Thanks, radio. All cars back on. Thanks very much for everyone's assistance. Back at police college. Students are learning not every driver they stop will be polite and cooperative. Oh, yeah! 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 Come on, just take you at least the vest off. That's it. <laughs> just the vest. Oh, just take your vest off. <laughs> just the vest. <laughs> and the belt take too. Your vest. Do you reckon that's not going to happen? No, I know. How are you? I knew that. You just got to try your best. You've got to communicate with them, OK? Um, These challenges will test everyone. Even laid-back surfer Kyle. Today, he's officer in charge. You're going to get the driver out and ask him to come over there and uh, and uh, have a chat with you about uh, about the tail light. Okay? Yeah. Rightio? All right. Sweet. You guys are all going to get out of the car and you're going to go over. No one's going to get violent with them or anything like that. Just just making a pest of yourself. Okay? What he's got to do is um, keep calm, trying to keep a, a cool head, uh, keeping good situational awareness, knowing what's going on around you and communicating well with the offender. I'm going to just get you to jump out of the car for me. Yes? Yeah, yep. Just come out, come out the back here. Just watch, watch, watch the cars, all right? What's going on? Just step in here. All right. Let's go have a chat about the car. Keep it shut, keep it shut. Stay in the car. Get 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 in the more you, tickets and I need to, right? Get in the car. I go to the passengers, I go, get back in the car or I'll, I'll issue you, your friend more tickets. <laughs> well, I shouldn't have done that, it was a bit of a threat. But... Radio guys, hop out. They had a, a fairly difficult situation in trying to control uh, people who were getting out of the car and, and giving them a hard time and distracting them, and they did that quite well. So all in all, I think, uh, I think Cole did very well. Yeah. That's good, man. Yeah, that's fine, I love it. On the streets of Kensington in Sydney's east, police have set up an RBT stop. Mother of three, Karen, is just four months out of police college. Now she's dealing with unruly people for real. Obviously now, applying it all out here is going to be slightly different. It's trying to listen to the radio, see what's going on, and also see what's going around you with the other traffic. Every year in New South Wales, police carry out nearly four and a half million tests. Yeah, that's all good. No problem. Thank you. Have a good night. 24,000 drivers failed. Thank you. Karen has just found one more. You know what to do? Yeah. Go on. You're now under arrest because you've um, provided us with a positive um, blood alcohol test. Um. Thank you, sir. The alcometer, I think, said it was 0.138. So almost three times over the limit. At the moment, you're under arrest for a positive um, breath test. Oh, what did that show down there? Seems like a bit of a comedy act to me. We've got to ask you. It's far from, yeah. far yeah. from a comedy yeah. act, okay? Sorry, so. okay. It's already a bad situation for the driver, but it's about to get a lot worse. Well, mate, can I nah, sit here? Obviously, obviously here. No, I can sit here. I can sit here. Sit down. You don't move again. Okay. Or are you going to arrest me? Well, you're already under arrest. Oh, okay. Don't well, just this arrest me, mate. Just block me up and put me up. You know what I mean? Come on. Turn around. Please. Well, that's it, look me up. That's it, come on. Yes, sir. Probationary Constable Karen Yeager and her partner are dealing with a driver who's failed a breath test. Oh, come on, come with this f***ing mate. Just block me up and put me up. You know what I mean? Come on. Turn around. Well, that's it, look me up. That's it, come on. Let's go in the van now. What difference, mate? I, I, on your knees. On your knees, all right? Come on. Hands behind your back. Yeah. I'm not moving anything, all right? They're really tight as well. Before he's charged, the man needs to undergo an official test back at the station. Keep going, keep going, keep going. If he's going to get charged, that's the reading we're going to be using in the charge. The initial one we had was 0.138. Okay, you can stand up and you can have a look at your result on here, okay? So it's 0.090. Point zero nine. Mid-range drink driving. He can't believe it. Because I don't think that, you know, I think it's only that vodka. I know I've had six beers in six hours. 
unless you want to redo the test in half an hour. No, I think we don't you redo the test. Okay. I don't usually drink spirits, and someone said, oh, I have a, job. I have a, I have a nip. It's his, it's his wedding, you know? Yeah. And that was a big mistake. That was the biggest mistake. Just, don't worry about it. Just, just find me or what you've got to do. Don't worry. Just, just nip it through. Okay. That's fair enough. I don't want to waste your time. As well, the man's license is suspended immediately, pending his court appearance. So I can't drive to tour that day? Yeah, it'll give you a suspension notice as well, because you've gone mid-range, so... So I can't drive for six weeks? Yeah. Uh, that's the process the field can is given um, for a date six weeks down the track, so. I, I don't think I'm a bad person. I'm not drunk, I'm not. I got caught for drunk driving. That's, you know, according to the breath test, I'm drunk driving, so we, we got to admit that, you know. But. I'm not a bad person in general. <laughs> nice enough guy. At the end, he seems quite apologetic to realise that wasn't a good thing to do that. I still think that if I if I let it another hour... It's I'll... not how it works. Yeah, I know. You know, it's not how it works. No, I know. In session two at police college, physical fitness just gets harder. 23-year-old Mika Williams is so determined to stay ahead, she's training with the boys. Keeping up the boys is really hard. They're a little bit faster and a little bit stronger, most of them, so it's, it's good to be able to push yourself and, and run with them and, and do other work with them. Mika used to be an event manager. It's been tough getting out from behind a desk. <laughs> when I get out and, you know, I'm on the streets, I want to be one of the cops that, you know, can chase down people and can keep up with everybody else and, and can do just as good a job as, you know, everybody. So that's, it's important to do these sessions now so it helps in the future. But Mika's enthusiasm might count against her. She's got the flu, but insists on taking on a tough training session. So, we'll start off. Remember, all I'll say at the moment is communication, talk to each other and teamwork. Righto, pick up the rope. That's not to touch the ground at any stage. The class will carry a rope for six kilometres. Every time someone drops it, they all get punished. Up! Why is that rope touching the ground? One! And up! Two! Three! Follow my direction! Get up! For the first time at college, Mika starts falling behind the pack. What are you running in the cold for? What did you stop for? I feel pretty sick. Yeah. I don't want to give up though, but I'll see how it goes. Stand up! Push. Push yourself. That's it. Start out. Good run. Good run. It's the biggest challenge she's faced, but Mika manages to finish the run. You guys, as a group, you need to work at it because that was, I have to say, probably the worst two group I've had this week. Are there any questions? See you later. I couldn't even feel my body for like the last 20 metres. There were some bits I definitely thought that like I wasn't going to get there. Yeah, and I like had enough. But in the end, I got there. Shari Adams left a sleepy coastal town to become a cop. In the five yeah. months since she finished college, she's conducted her share of traffic stops. Yeah, for a small car, there's a fair amount of stuff in it. Wasn't expecting all this. Some traffic incidents are serious, some are routine. Did you get onto the um, insurance company? I think I enjoy most just getting in truck. You don't know what's going to happen for the day. It's always going to be something different. Today, a big test for a small town girl. Is that bus broken yet? Yep. A broken down bus on one of Sydney's busiest roads in peak hour. And it's Shari's problem. Right. How about you get out and push it? <laughs> On Sydney's Anzac Bridge, Shari Adams has her hands full. I'll go talk to him. All right. Yeah. It's peak hour. A broken down bus is holding up traffic. He's got a flat battery. So he's called his people or whatever. It's going to take half an hour, he reckons. The bus is empty. 
but it's not a great start to the shift for driver Alvarez. So all your instruments, all your dials just died? Yeah, it's was it. So I couldn't control, so I had to try to hold hard and try to get it in a position where it doesn't disturb so much traffic. But it still is, uh, it's pretty, I, don't, I wouldn't like it to have a <laughs> in, in Anza Bridge. Travel we'll Management Centre is on their way um, to move this bus off the road, obviously, because it's a big bus and peace people can't come for half an hour and we're on the Anzac Bridge, so we need to get it moved straight away. Last month, as you've been 30 years in the job, uh, it didn't happen before. They haven't experienced to break up in the bridge or Anza Bridge or whatever bridge. Finally, Alvarez's saviour arrives, bearing jumper leads. Oh. Beautiful. All good, too. You're ready to go. I'll call off everyone and you're on your way. That's okay, mate. That's all right. Within minutes, traffic is back to normal. Another job done for Shari. But we're just in our main and we just got a bridge off the Anzac. I mean, a bus off the Anzac bridge. A bridge off the Anzac. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big day at police college. Oh, how beautiful. We all have big bums. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time students turn out in full parade uniform. This whole day will be a special day. Like, I always remember the first day I put my proper, like, the formal uniform on and, yeah, it's exciting. Today, our recruits turn out in uniform for the first time in an official capacity. It's a, one of the milestones of the program for them. And uh, today they start to really feel like they're going to be police, I guess. Cross on parade! I spent all Sunday night ironing, making sure everything was right, cruises are in the right spot and everything. We're wearing something that officers out there wear every day. Uh, officers have died in the uniform, so there's definitely a sense of pride in wearing it. I recall when I first was here as a recruit myself and that, that first morning of wearing the uniform, it's just, I felt transformed. And I know that's how these people feel this morning, transformed. There's a new stage in my life. Um, I'm 20 years old, so I'm trying to do something with myself and it feels like I'm, I'm actually getting somewhere. And yeah, hopefully mum, mum and dad will be proud of it. So, happy about that. Blue, couple of minutes. Next time on Recruits. How you came in. Yeah. MJ on the hunt for armed bandits on a robbing spree. The same car that's robbed the bottle shop behind us has just robbed the bottle shop at Ashfield. Please stop him! Oh, get back, sorry. At college, Nina's future is on the line. We had to call her in. Sometimes in life, you just got to do what you got to do. And Mick faces a dangerous situation at a domestic dispute. You haven't got any firearms in the house. To see more of Mika put through her paces, log on to the website. It's a big day at police college. Oh, how beautiful. We all have big bums. <laughs> this is the first time students turn out in full parade uniform. This whole day will be a special day. Like, I always remember the first day I put my proper, like, the formal uniform on and, yeah, it's exciting. Today, our recruits turn out in uniform for the first time in an official capacity. It's a, one of the milestones of the program for them. And uh, today, they start to really feel like they're going to be police, I guess. Cross on parade! I spent all Sunday night ironing, making sure everything was right, cruises are in the right spot and everything. We're wearing something that officers out there wear every day. Uh, officers have died in the uniform, so there's definitely a sense of pride in wearing it. I recall when I first was here as a recruit myself and that, that first morning of wearing the uniform, it's just, I felt transformed. And I know that's how these people feel this morning, transformed. There's a new stage in my life. Um, 
I'm 20 years old, so I'm trying to do something with myself and it feels like I'm, I'm actually getting somewhere and, yeah, hopefully mum, mum and dad will be proud of it, so happy about that. Blue, Next time on Recruits. They came in, yeah. MJ, on the hunt for armed bandits on a robbing spree. The same car that's robbed the bottle shop behind us has just robbed the bottle shop at Ashfield. Please stop him! Oh, get back, sorry. At college, <laughs> Nina's future is on the line. We had to call her in. Sometimes in life, you just got to do what you got to do. And Mick faces a dangerous situation at a domestic dispute. You haven't got any firearms in the house. To see more of Mika put through her paces, log on to the website.